Hi guys and welcome back to our next video. Now here I'm gonna be talking about uh, another tool which is great for creating uh, and performing actually wireless network stack and that tool is, the tool, sorry, is basically called Foxion or Foxion as, uh, as you like to call it but uh, that tool has been developing three years and it's improving every year I'm seeing an improvement any single time I need to run that tool so now it's time to basically show you how it's done, show you what is the basic of the tool and uh, of course how it works. And keep in mind that all of that is for uh, testing purpose and educational purpose and I'm not responsible for any action you perform with that tool or any of the tools in these video lectures. So first now before actually going to function we need to install it. So open a Firefox. I'm not sure if they add the, the function to repository, so let's just try to actually use apt-get to install function. So, so apt-get install function. No, it's, it was not added. Okay, now, great. Now we need to actually, uh, it was opened. So now we need to actually navigate uh, function and uh, go to like the GitHub page right here. And now this is the GitHub of the tool. As you can see, it's of course open source. It, it says the rank one, a Wi-Fi cracker. It really indeed works pretty well. And of course, there is an installation of uh, installation notes, installation instructions, other references, requirements, and uh, we have like how it works. So basically, here uh, it's an attack again for uh, fake AP attacks but uh, now let's just see it in action so here we need to basically go here copy that open the terminal and now we just need to paste that so let's navigate to desktop and now just git clone and paste that link so here if you don't have git clone and you encounter some error first see what is the error if there is about permission use sudo if it's about git you can go and say apt get install git this is going to install uh, the git and therefore you can uh, repeat the command so git clone the end link and this is going to extract everything from the github page to our desktop in the folder called function and now uh, we see the folder appears right here so now we're going to inspect using the command line of course because as we said before as long as you are used to command line the better so here the script is basically installed and now let's actually uh, see to that folder and of course uh, keep in mind that with tap you can auto compute the sentences or the words or the files so now click enter and now we have to list everything available and we have attacks being code of conduct uh, we have config uh, contributing docs function the script itself we have the language lip license and logos and so on so basically here let's start by exploring the script let's open it with vim and now this is basically the whole bio of the script how it was written and of course it's a complex of dependencies docs and so on but uh, this is the whole bio of the script the one we are executing and basically running so we're gonna take a quick overview about the script and what does it has inside. So we have a parameter check, parse check. Uh, we have all the checks written right there. And as you can see, the developers did a great job by actually specifying uh, nice commands. So for example, here a library includes, so this is sourcing all the, all the needed libraries. Here's where parsing parameters, see the library, uh, the, the developer, sorry, uh, made a great job by commenting every single one of the tools, every single one of the pages in order to actually explain us what to actually expect from the code and what to actually search for the code. We have here the usage option where we are uh, specified with some options we can specify here. So this is the boil of the script, we are not going to inspect uh, the whole script. I just wanted to, to open that and to give you like a brief idea about what the scripts are working like. And this script is really done amazing. It is structured well and it, everything is easy, easy be readable. Uh, so now, here, uh, now I just exit that script. Right, quit. And now it's time to run that. And first time, it's always good to run with uh, 
to, with help to see what options we need to actually specify do we need to install any dependencies and so on because in the script there are a lot of uh, sentences a lot of things that is going to basically uh, they, they are used for uh, clear output and clear use of the tool but uh, in order to see what exactly we need it's always good to specify the age option for help or to actually see the manual page which is slightly different and we're gonna see that in a second so here we have uh, the names, uh, the synopsis, and therefore we have the options. Okay, nice. So let's go here and type uh, function v for version. We have 5.7, and now I think uh, the e was for install. So the first time you git clone the function, it's always good practice to run with install to install any dependencies you want and if you don't run it with uh, the e or parameter specified the function is gonna warn you that you need that so click enter and now the function is actually installing everything it needs uh, so i think all the all like the suggestions and the dependencies were uh, satisfied so now i need to specify my language so five for english and now we can select a wireless attack for the access point. So here we have uh, two options. We have like, now we are in the function. So basically, if I go out with the three one and just terminate the process and uh, rerun that again without the E option, I should get the exact same menu. So uh, now it's going to check everything and now click five for English. And yeah, I got the same menu. So. All, all dependencies were installed, all dependencies were, were satisfied, and now my script is actually ready to go and ready to be used. So now here the procedure is quite the same, but the tool is making the things uh, a little bit different. Like we want the same output, we want uh, again to, to get the password from the targeted like network. So here if I go to network major and specify the wireless ones. I should see that uh, there are a lot of connections. Come on. Or if I go to my Windows machine and uh, see the wireless networks. Yeah, so I have a lot of connections. So now uh, I need to basically have access to, to that target network and that's what we are going to use the function for. So uh, we saw in the previous video that before we actually go for uh, straight hacking we need first to capture the handshake because we are using that handshake in order to basically see and try all the combinations we get as a web server so basically whenever the web server is hosted and the user walks in he's going to be prompted out with a login page and whenever he types in that login page is going to be captured Therefore, the tool is going to use the handshake we have gathered before and it's going to throw that into the router itself, into the AP. And if we get successful communication, it's going to say, nice, okay, your connection is going to be established. And if we did not get that right, it is going to say a wrong password and it's going to return us back to the procedure of putting the password back. So here, before we actually do anything whatsoever, we need to handshake snooper. We, we have to go for two. Now, allocating the word, yeah, this is just, and this failed, I'm not sure why. Yeah, I really was not sure why that happens, but uh, it's always a good practice to rerun the process, the process and see if it's going to work. And if not, try to actually disable and basically pull out and pull in your wireless adapter or bring it down and up with IF config and so on. So basically uh, there is a lot of time when uh, some errors like that occurs and those errors are mainly uh, can be can be occurred from many reasons like really from many reasons and when the developers do not know what the reasons are or they are not sure or uh, they do not want to write code that basically Small, small chance of people is going gonna, is gonna to understand. So basically, when the developers have these circumstances, they just say like uh, abstract error, like this failed. And they don't give us like the reason why it failed, but they say like that failed. 
as we said this can be uh, for possible reasons of uh, dependency crashing your hardware your software this can be like uh, in multiple reasons and the, de and the developers cannot be sure from where the problem is coming and that's why they say just failed and of course they can be lazy but i'm not sure the functional developers are lazy they made it amazing too so they prove themselves they are not lazy so uh, let's get back in track and go for now uh, we need to specify the chat the, the channel we want to look for and specify the handshake so basically here we have uh, like four four options and five for exit the first three options are for specified gigahertz range and the third option is basically for every gigahertz out there for 2.4 and 5 gigahertz but uh, i guess all the available networks here are using 2.4 gigahertz so i'm gonna go for one and now this again is open in xterm as we've talked before xterm is uh, again usually used in a lot of platforms because they basically is quite simple and it's abstract and it's basically everywhere the xterm is completely everywhere so that's why they're using that too so as you can see it's not good looking beautiful and not, not good looking but uh, it's doing the work so we scanned enough networks now it's time to basically click uh, ctrl c for cancel in that external window right here we don't want to cause the main process which which occurs here remember when we talked about process basically whenever we, we run in that console or terminal it's creating a process which can create threads and basically if we remove the console uh, by clicking the here or terminating the process by clicking Control c we're gonna terminate the program itself so basically the program creates process every program is a process so basically you have to understand that when you here we press Control c we are terminating the process therefore we are shutting down the program so now we must actually uh, specify the Control c combination here because this is going to actually take the output to the main function window this this uh, process is going to be terminated right now and it, the output is going to be transmitted so here now we have like uh, all the networks around me and uh, basically those networks in green are the ones that are used in the moment that have have some traffic inside and uh, basically now i want to go for uh, choosing my network which is adding and now here select a wireless interface for target tracking basically if we have another unused, unused interface wireless one of course we can go there and basically shoot that interface to watch over the traffic watch over what's happening right there but since we are not sure we don't have that just press 2 as we as they say in the description right here if you are unsure choose skip so and therefore uh, we need to select a method of handshake retrieval so basically this is like uh, the way the handshake is gonna basically come to us uh, i personally suggest why the second option the airplay ng since i've used it the most and i am sure that it's working i have tried the other two options but like the the difference is not that much the like huge but uh, i personally like the second option the most so basically go for two you can of course go and play around with every single option out there so uh you don't have to worry about nothing and therefore select a method of verification for the hash and now basically uh, go for the recommended one and now uh, how often should we verify check for a handshake i i suggest every 30 seconds because even even 30 seconds is just a huge amount of time so go for one and now how should the verification occur and of course you can if your system is fast you can go for asynchronously but uh, i now should go for synchronously just to see what's happening over there so go for two the difference again is not any 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 huge so do not worry again so go for two and now you can see that we specified that exact network with that exact uh, bss id which means the mac address now we've started to de-authenticate uh, all in the network and now i should see that i should see that my connection was cut off and uh any, any moment i should see that because my virtual machine the ethernet adapter from the virtual machine is basically uh bridging the wireless adapter from my windows main machine and basically whenever the windows main machine do not have any any uh connection sorry 
that machine also is not going to have connection as well because I'm, us I'm using bridge network and I'm dependent of that adapter. So if my Windows has network, I has to. If the Windows has not, I has not to. So in that case, I do not have any network whatsoever. You see the red uh, PC right here, the network disconnected, it says, the plasma dome. So we are now disconnected and we are waiting for a handshake. If the handshake is not basically captured, uh, the procedure is basically repeated. Now I can go and uh, basically try to connect to my network in order to see the, to, to retrieve the handshake. And now upon connecting, immediately in the very moment I click connect, the handshake was caught. And now we have handshake, we must actually wait to, uh, to pass that 30 seconds of time. And after that, we have the handshake and we can basically go forth and start doing the attack. So here let's analyze the output and see what information we have. We have uh, a valid hash was detected and saved to functions database. So basically, what, that, what does that mean? Well, a function tool is uh, using buffers and now they saved the hash, the handshake hash in that buffer. So when we continue furthermore in the attacks, we would not specify the exact file where function has actually saved our hash, but function has buffered the hash. So since we are not closing that window, actually that window, the main one, since we are not closing the main window, we are actually good to go. So basically uh, it's working with, with its own database. I'm not sure if, if it's saving automatically the hash that's in, in the folder, if there's any a cap file out there, so go for attacks, captive portal, nothing, nothing here, handshake, uh, nothing here again, handshakes, yeah, okay, so we have uh, the handshake, we have the cap file, so it also saves the file, but it's also making the buffer, so we're going to use that buffer in order to perform and be persistent in that attack. You can of course go and specify the file, it's quite the same, it does not really matter, but the point is that it's saving the file and it's making the buffer and it's saving the handshake in both places. So now let's go to select another attack, we can here go and save that window. And uh, here we have to wait a little bit. Now we have a captive portal, which actually creates an evil twin access point and so far we know what's the evil twin. And here, as you can see, we have some brief information about the network we are targeting. So we have the ESS ID, we have the encryption method, we have uh, the channel and the MAC address or BSS ID. So now I should go for one since we have the handshake now. Go for one. And now we have uh, function is targeting the access point above. So by the access point above, function means that one, that one which was buffered. So uh, continue, yes. That was the buffer I was talking about. That that above section was the buffer I was explaining about. So here, again, skip. And now we have uh, two, select two. This is our external USB wi wireless adapter. And now we have uh, Rogue AP using host APD, which is recommended. And we have Rogue AP, which is using Airbase NG, which is slow. So uh, here you can play around with uh, both options. There is a chance of uh, a little chance when one of that option basically fail and do not uh, do the work as we expect and should. And in that case, we can go for the second one. But uh, so far, uh, both options are working pretty well on my PC. And now I'm going for the faster one, which is the one host host APD. Now click one. Now here a hash for the target AP was found. Do you want to use this file? Of course. Uh, we need we can specify path to hash. We can rescan uh, handshake directory and we can use hash. So click one, enter. And now here uh, we see the buffer right here about information. We see uh, the options which are pirate verification. We have the airbase edge verification and we have copy verification, which is the recommended. And now I am going again for that. So click three. So the hash, the hash verification completed. Now here uh, we can even create a SL certificate. And this is the where the function is 
basically really good at it can even create an SSL certificate an HTTPS connection and for those of you who don't who do not know what's an SSL certificate it's basically uh, the encryption of the communication when you install such certificate is basically saying the connection is encrypted it, it encrypts the connection so far if anyone becomes main in the middle he won't capture any sensitive information whatsoever so here we can even detect this cell or we can leave without this cell but now just to see how it goes we go for one to implement such an attack and see uh, how the things with SO certificate looks like if you are more interested you can always open uh, google and type SL certificate and of course we don't have internet connection because we was cut it off let's try to reestablish since we are not the authenticating anymore yeah so go for search now since you immediately reconnected uh, and now go for uh, why is an SL let's go Wikipedia and therefore you can go and start like analyzing searching for information and learning new stuff so I'm noting that's the case you can open some article not uh, not really needed to be Wikipedia but let's say certificate authority yeah so you can go here write all that stuff this is the way of encryption like using the public and private key and uh, the encryption is like the best friend of of our systems nowadays uh, as a security analyst and our worst enemies as a white well, hackers or penetration testers since the security is, the encryption sorry is blocking us of performing various of attacks such as main in the middle because for example if someone becomes main in the middle and the connection is secured he gets the packets but he cannot decrypt them so basically that encryption is a huge a huge innovation and of course it's not since today or yesterday it's a wide range story so basically you can go here and uh, read as much as you want and learn new things so on so here we're gonna learn how the certificates are basically working and uh, you can go search for openness uh, search for heartbeat vulnerability pull vulnerability of course there are vulnerabilities even for the certificates and communications so this is a topic for another video so uh, close that we don't need it anymore and now here just create a certificate just one now here uh, select an internet connectivity type of the rogue network so basically this is actually going to shut down the the connection we basically are targeting so if i go for one disconnect and click one uh and click enter sorry now i need to specify basically what vendor i guess the target is using so i'm guessing in my case i know that uh there are a tp link inside but here we have a generic uh, generic portal in bulgarian so i think this is going to do the most work so basically here every isp basically most of the isps and uh, basically anyone is setting up the routers and the configuration in bulgarian language so if i use that uh, generic portal it's gonna actually go and represent us to bulgarian page in bulgarian text and so on and basically it's gonna be more trustworthy to fill the credentials but here just for demonstration purpose i'm gonna scroll down and for example use the cisco one where was that cisco 34 uh no it's in uh not in english i'm gonna use the tp link 64 in english so basically go here type 64 and now basically our attacking has started so now we, we should get a lot of uh, windows right here yeah so we have all of uh, external windows right there and this is basically our attack up and running and uh, basically now what it's doing is uh, pretty much the same we did in the previous video we are uh, first the authenticating and dropping down the whole connection of our target with that window here we have function web server when we're going to walk anything what happens whatsoever here we have function DNS service, which is going to walk every DNS and request that is made uh, to that AP. We have function DHCP service, which, which grants an IP addresses and this time to any host which comes. We have the AP service there and therefore we have the 
uh, access point refraction AP authenticator. So basically, if anything comes here, like a client, like a password, it's going to be in that field. So here we see our connection dropped out. And uh, if I uh, see I should not be able to get any real page, if I go here again and try to connect to the original one, let's see what actually happens. As you can see, I'm not able to connect to my network whatsoever. This is my real one. So basically, I'm going to continuously to try to see how much um, or basically what can we do from that point of view. So basically, you have, we are here in the victim point of view. And of course, when something like that happens, the case is not to open that network. So I can connect to this network. OK, try again. So what the most user will do is they're gonna think there is some kind of an error on a or a bug or anything, and if they're not into security and not into like an IT at all, they're gonna see a network which is open with the exact same name, and uh, and the MAC address is not even shown here. So basically, they're gonna see the name and they're gonna be wired to actually connect to that network since they don't have any internet connection at all. Or it's actually a good social engineering attack to actually call your uh, uh, to call your wireless network like free AP, and since you are dropping out the constant real connection of your target, they're gonna see see we have a free AP and they're gonna connect there. They're gonna be prompted out, but that's not the case because with the free AP, uh, they're gonna prompt it out with the login screen for. Uh, wireless and uh, you have to wire them that they are connecting to the same network but there is some issues with the router so if you are going to set a free ap uh, essid you better go for some many the middle attacks dns spoof attacks and so on so basically you need to have internet connection you need to actually have wireless adapter for that attack you need to actually create a fake access point again and uh, enable packet forwarding so you can bring internet connection to anyone connect to you. Therefore, you need to basically uh, drop out the connection and whenever they come to your free Wi-Fi, you can now start implementing your attack and uh, like gather information and so on. So uh, this is like a good example of social engineering when you want to perform man in the middle attacks and still sensitive information, still valuable data like you can uh, uh, specify your network uh, as well as android ap the free network so basically when their connection stops they're gonna actually open the network they're gonna see the free network they're gonna connect and therefore they're gonna be attacked without them even knowing but now as we can see let's bring us to our case because that was topic for another video let's bring it to our case now we have we can connect to that network let's see uh, about that one so uh, click connect now it's connecting let's wait a little bit and see what happens sometimes the procedure is uh, taking time which is uh, absolutely normal nothing ever happens in the speed of light even with the technology let's try that again and our network went down. I'm not sure why. I think we are connected now. Okay. Now, if we actually manage to put some requests or to basically Visit some website, let's say google.com. Let's see what happens. So now they just drop out the connection and uh, try that again. So uh, connecting right now. Try to open Google. We get an assigned IP address. We actually, oh, there we go. So we needed to wait. It basically opens our default web browser and now we have a firmware upgrade so basically we needed to wait a little bit longer so here let's go to h and see what uh, what happened there nothing let's go to google and we get to the same page so click that so basically the tool is opening your uh, default browser the access point and as you can see you were asked for uh, 
pass phase and uh, let's see I enter something right here start uh, information check please check that I agree with them okay and click wrong password so now whenever we click that we, we click that link an action for example that action start upgrade basically it's getting the passphrase we've entered right here it uses the the handshake we've previously captured and therefore shows the password towards the ap like uh, forcing the ap for a connection asking the real ap for a connection since it knows on mac address and what bssid and what essid stands the real one so it just shows that connection tries that connection and if everything is all right it says right like you're gonna see now and if it says wrong it's gonna see it's gonna say wrong password so let's just type uh the password so the the update is currently being ported to the router please don't disconnect to turn on the router so as you can see it's actually done pretty good it's actually uh done like mind-blowingly good as you can see it's just uh, having a, an upgrade button an upgrade uh, progress bar we have uh like all the options uh about their like access restriction let's see what happens there administration and so on. let's see what pages are there and we see the upgrade uh as well so basically whenever page we visit is gonna actually uh redirect us to that upgrade one since it's uh, important so as you can see it's done pretty realistic and if we don't know what's happening whatsoever we would uh, be even hard to realize what's actually happening right right there so here uh how can you how can you understand that this is the fake one and how can you protect first see that we have the captive gateway that one final that html so we basically have wallet an html page if there's the real router it should come with some kind of an ip like if i go to ip config and see my uh, default gateway i do not have any right now because probably i'm disconnected but if i connect to my real network i'm gonna see some gateway right there and here in order to actually see my router i need to have like an ip address like 192.168.1.1 or 01 or whatever you actually configure it but here i see captive gateway that one we have some dns uh, spoofing over there we dns spoof that one into the ip of our like the mac address of our uh, attacker machine so basically here the update was finished and uh, we see the message the update was successfully and currently is being installed the router is being rebooted and you're going to lose access to internet please allow a timer to expire before you connect back to router so as you can see this is done amazing amazing done by this guy's made function uh it's just doing all it should like how it should it's just faking page is good like uh it's having even the progress bar and it's having the the some kind of a timer it has like all the functionalities needs and we have to implement like a little bit of social engineering attacks to implement that attack and now it's time to go to our archive machine and see we have the key found and basically the password was saved there so uh, we have the aircraft ng we have uh, one key tested so basically this is the whole process we were missing in a previous video to actually see and visualize so here the, the two should at aircraft ng uh, did not automatically cause the output so we can furthermore go and analyze what happened so here basically the the aircraft ng got the handshake got the passphrase that we were throwing at shoot it against the ap using the handshake and now it just compared he just wanted the connection and see that the response was successful so this is the password we were looking for so this is the tool and it was saved the password right there and but of course it's always a good idea to copy that and paste it somewhere where you can basically come on where you cannot forget or delete it so this is the overview of function i hope this was uh, useful for you and of course as as we speak before whenever the attack is finished what we do correct reboot the device so whenever you click ctrl c go for reboot the device since you are sure the password is safe so click reboot 
when you save the password as we said before there were there, there are times when the bug can occur and the password cannot be properly saved in in such cases you need to save your password copy put into notes put in some text files uh, write on your forehead and just make it a way to remember it because whenever we reboot therefore we need to actually if we lost the password we need to actually repeat all these steps and again and again and again and so on so whenever we get the password make sure you double save the password like the function said the password was saved but we must make sure the password was saved and so you can manually save it to a file to a, to a notebook and so on so after you save that reboot immediately to make sure all the services are terminated to make sure no ap are actually up and running and to make sure everything is basically uh as the old days not as ever ever nothing happened right there so this is the point of the attack and this is basically the point of any social engineering attack or any attack whatsoever when you're attacking and when you're implementing such such tools or attacks whenever the attack finish and you received our goal in our case the goal was to basically have the password so whenever you achieve what you wanted cut off the attack immediately cover your tracks and move on so we don't have to actually stay persistent in that case and uh, the authenticating constantly with the users they can for example start calling some uh, isps and even the police and so on so basically this is illegal be careful and keep in mind that whenever you finish the attack please call your tracks cut off everything immediately and reboot to make sure that everything is like the old days like not never happened and you have the password they have internet connection everyone is happy everything is good so uh this for today today's video guys i really appreciate you for watching and in the next video we're going to continue that series so uh stay tuned for more